Oh, uh, yeah. Good evening and welcome to M3 Live. This is Melvin M. Miller, and that song was off of my uh, You Have Problem. <laughs> that one was called Here's to Life, and that was called You Have Problem. It featured Eric Essex on guitar and a cast of great musicians. Now, check this out. This is M3 Live. Now, where did M3 Live come from? M3 Live came from a concept that I had a while ago where I wanted to do this series called uh, the M3 Lounge. Well, when COVID hit, I said, how can I continue to do my M3 Lounge but do it remotely and make sure that everybody is safe? Hence, M3 Live is bored because I am a very, very big proponent of owning everything that we do. So I just wanted to make sure that I did it the right way. That's why I took so long. So, hey guys, guess what? Welcome to M3 Live. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Now, look, make sure that right now, if you are watching us, you're watching us on Facebook. But you can also go and check me out, of course, on Instagram at Melvin M. Miller. Everything that I do is Melvin M. Miller or M3. Twitter is Melvin M. Miller. So we are live right now for your enjoyment. Now, when I say live, I'm talking about 100% live. None of this is pre-recorded except for maybe some of the little treats that I have. But if you want to send me a comment right now and you want to ask a question or anything like that, please feel free to go ahead and shoot me a comment right in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Who knows? Your comment may even end up on screen. So be careful what you ask. But I'm honored to have a very, very, very special guest with me tonight. Now, me and this gentleman go way, way, way back. When I say way back, um, that was pre-grave for me and, I, and uh, before, <laughs> before he was who he is now. I'm talking about fresh, fresh on the scene. Oh, what up? So we, we're going to get it started right now. We're just going to throw it up here right quick. We got... We got Doc Robinson joining us right here. We got Doc Robinson. Hey, Doc, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us right quick, Doc. Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. So my very, very special guest that I have coming up is none other. How do I describe him? Let's see. He's a father. He's a great father. Now, when I say a great father, I mean like he is dedicated. He is dedicated to his family. And that is crucial to any foundation dedicated to his family. Um, when I say family, we're going to get in a little bit of that. So without further ado, please put your hands together and welcome Mike Burton, y'all. Mike Burton. What up, Mikey? What's up? What's up, brother? <laughs> Mike hey, Burton, y'all. First of all, let me, just say, let me just say that your production level for this thing is, is serious. <laughs> oh, you man. I've out, outdone yourself, brother. This looks like I'm on Arsenio Hall show. So, man, <laughs> I'm showing my age, telling my age right there. But. Hey, man. Hey, yeah. man, with the finger. Our senior with the finger. <laughs> hey, Mike, I am, like, honored to have you here. Hey, Mike, we got uh, Sherwin. Sherwin is up in the house. Do you know? You know uh, Sherwin. Oh, yeah, man. That's a talented saxophonist from down in the U.S. Virgin Islands, man. I worked with him when I was working with the uh, United Jazz Foundation. He's a, he's a great young saxophonist, man. So what's up, Sherwin? Okay, we got Sherwin join us. And, of course, my, Cynthia, yeah. my sister Cynthia is joining us as well, so I'm just happy to have all of these wonderful people joining us. Um, now, this hey, is, Cynthia. like I said, huh? I said, hey, Cynthia. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my younger, older sister. That's like my bodyguard. Right. You know, she don't, she don't, play, <laughs> <laughs> she don't play nothing. Right. Now, when I tell everybody, Mike, that this is live, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm having fun right now because anybody that really knows me knows that I'm a nerd. So just then... I could not find my mouse. My mouse was like someplace else. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw this up on the screen right quick. You know, we got Sherwin okay. up in the house. So I just wanted to throw, throw Sherwin up there so we can make sure that, um, you know, we get all the comments Sherwin. happening. Yeah. Want to make sure we get all the comments yeah, happening. Yeah. So let me move Sherwin up here a little bit so we can see what's happening with Sherwin right there. So, Mike, I said that I wanted to dig. I told you I wanted to dig. Now... Anybody that's listening or watching, uh, you can go and check out Mike's bio wherever you want to go. But I wanted to take this opportunity to dig a little bit, to dig a little bit. Okay. So, Mike, I'm going to let you start off first. Who is Mike Burton? Wow. Um, 
Mike Burton is just a, a kid from uh, Jackson, Mississippi, um, who had dreams and aspirations of making it in the music industry, uh, playing the saxophone, traveling the world. Um, you know, I love my family, uh, my wife and my kids, my, my parents, you know, I come from good stock and uh, just trying to, you know, do what I love day by day, man. And, uh, you know, I've been blessed to make a living doing it, man. So uh, I guess that's it in a nutshell, man. Now, Mike, when you say you come from good stock, you come from great stock. So let me let me go back a little bit further, sir. I'm okay. just going to I'm just going to read this little blurb that I saw here. Your mother is an original member of the legendary Mississippi Mass Choir, and yeah. your father played sax, saxophone. Yeah. So tell me about that, man. How what, what what was it like growing up with that kind of musical household? Uh, it was amazing, man. So I, I'll say my dad played sax. He wasn't like a professional saxophonist by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely. But he yeah. played. Uh, he played in high school. He played in college. You know, and uh, he was very uh, instrumental in. Um, you know, making sure that I went that route <laughs> too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, he would have me listening to Grover Washington and a lot of jazz, a lot of smooth jazz, a lot of old school R and B. Had a great album collection: uh, Stevie Wonder, uh, the OJ's, uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, all that good stuff. You know, mm -hmm. Billy Paul. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, we would sit down there on the floor and listen to records, man. You know, uh, as a kid, so definitely a major influence on me. Um, you know, as far as the music goes, my mom, she sang in church, uh, every Sunday, pretty much, you know, coming up. And, um, when I was probably maybe fifth or sixth grade, uh, the, the Mississippi Mass Choir was starting up back home and, uh, she was, you know, she was there, man. So I was, as a kid, I was going to, uh, you know, the, the choir rehearsals, uh, mm -hmm. I was, you know, going to the live recordings. I'm, you know, just hanging around me and the other kids, you know, we, we, we hiding up under the pews, running around the church while they in there, you know, rehearsing and recording this, this, uh, this classic gospel music, man, you know, songs that, you know, records that are, you know, uh, going on to do great things. I mean, I know that first album they put out, I think it was number one for, for over a year, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I, I think a lot of times, you know, maybe as a kid, I took for granted just you know, I was being exposed to greatness, you know, being right there. Mm -hmm. But now as an adult and looking back on my childhood, man, I was like, man, you were right there. Like, you know, I, I can be on tour and working on a show with somebody and I tell somebody where I'm from and, you know, where I grew up listening to and being being exposed. To, and they'll be like, man, you you were there? You're like, yeah, I was at the recording. Yeah, I was hanging out, James Moore and Frank Williams and all these people, man. You know, so it was, um, it was major for me, man, as a kid, just mm -hmm. to see that, to see to see them write these songs and come up with these songs, record these songs, take them on the road and just, just to see what music can do for you, man. So, you know, definitely, you know, just seeing both my parents, uh, you know, it was a uh, major, very positive. Hey, hey man, you know, and, you know, sp you know, speaking on your parents, hey Mike, I'm telling you, I watch you, I watch your interaction with your parents. I watch when y'all mm -hmm. hang out and, uh, you know, I just see the love there. You know what I'm saying? I see mm -hmm. all the love that your family has for you and you have for your family. So I, I think that that is just, you know, that's part of who Mike is. And I think that comes through your saxophone, man. I really do. Wow. I really I do. I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. And, and having met your parents, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a blessing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I it's just do. a blessing. So let me ask you this much, Mike. Yep. How did you get from Mississippi to Indiana University? How did you, what, 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 how did you, what was that thing like from high school from Mississippi to Indiana. Yeah. Man, uh, my, again, my parents, I mean, I was, I was very ambitious. I had hopes and dreams of doing this and that, um, you know, and uh, probably when I was a junior, um, Victor Goins, great saxophonist player, and that is, uh, he's in Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra at Wynn Marcellus. He came to my high school and uh, he was, he was in his early thirties at the time. So and I was, you know, 16 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just sitting down with him and talking to him and he was talking about, yeah, man, you know, I, I play the saxophone and I've traveled the world and I do this and I do that, you know, you know, and I was still trying to figure out if it's something I wanted to do for real, like pursue this in college and hearing his stories, man, and he was so cool and down to earth and he was, you know, telling me to practice and do this and that. I was like, this is attainable. I can do this, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I, start, I started getting letters in the mail from Berkeley College of Music to go up there for this uh, summer program. 
mm-hmm. and um and my church uh at, at the time pearl street ame church shout out to pearl street they helped us raise the money to send me up there for the summer oh, wow and, um, okay and so I, I was i went to boston the summer after my junior year of high school and um uh, i was exposed to all these because i thought i was i thought i was killing it man i thought i was <laughs> I thought I was the best <laughs> saxophonist. Yes, you know, sir. whatever. Mm-hmm. I got up there, man. These kids from Israel and South <laughs> Africa and <laughs> all over the United States and Europe, man. I mean, they were in there blazing. I was like, you know, I think, you know, I love where I'm from. I love Mississippi is, you know, definitely known for the gospel, gospel music and blues. And I was like, I think it's time for me to spread my wings, man, and check out some other things, you know. Mm-hmm. And initially, I, I, I did want to go back to Berkeley, you know, for college. But, um, that tuition was was a little steep. Absolutely. And uh, um, we had heard about IU, and uh, my mom was telling me about it. And I, you know, um, I, I didn't go to campus. I sent in my I sent in my my tape, which tells you how old I am. I sent in my. Uh, <laughs> what kind of tape was this, Mike? Of, it's an audio cassette, man. You know, <laughs> not not an eight track, but it was a tape, not a VHS. But uh, we sent that in for my audition, and. Um, Guy I got in. I got I got some money for school, man. And and you know, at the time, even now, it was considered to be one of the top five schools of music in the country, man. So I, like I said, I was ambitious. I knew I wanted to uh work in the industry. I didn't necessarily know how to um make those connections and how to be from Mississippi and meet people in New York and LA and this, but I knew I, I knew I wanted to do it, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and Indiana happened to be uh my vehicle to get me, you know, started on that path, man. And um, it was it, it was a great choice. It was a great learning ground for me, man. And uh, you know, glad glad we made that choice. Absolutely. Well, Mike, check this out. Um, give me two seconds. I got to do some 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 housekeeping stuff real quick. Okay. So just hang out. Mike Bird's okay. gonna hang out with it in just a second. So check this out, y'all. Um, just in case you don't know, who the, everybody that tuned in, I am Melvin M. Miller. Hence the M three up top. And uh, I've just recently you know, started some new branding stuff. So make sure that you go. If you just happen to be watching on YouTube, please make sure that you hit that wonderful subscribe button and hit the like button to make sure that, you know, we can keep this going. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I am honored to have my guest. Now, Mike, I got a question for you. (laughs) I'm going to take you back, Mike. So we've been talking about, you know, college and all that kind of stuff. So I got a question for you. Right. Can you do me a favor, Mike? What's this? Tell me about this picture right here, man. <laughs> Mike Burton. Oh my! Uh, Mike Burton, tell me about that my, picture right there. My hairline, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shirt and the what? Is, what was you wearing, bro? You got hey, like a rayon silk with with some see through stuff, man. Look, my man in the back got the vest with the. So yeah, that was this was my first tour out of college, man. Uh, I graduated <laughs> in May of that year. And two months later, I, I had just got my master's degree from the prestigious Indiana University <laughs> School of Music. And two months later, I was out there with the circus, man. I had joined the circus. <laughs> and uh, that's, how, that's how me and Melvin Miller became good friends, man. We toured the country nonstop, like, with t- 10 months straight out of the year, right? Just gone. Absolutely, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Man. It was good. Hey. Shout out to Dean James in the middle right there. Hey, man. Hey, hey Mike, check this out. We got... We got none other than bass oftenest Chris Snowden with us right now, hanging out, man. Oh, you know what I'm wow. saying? What's up, brother? Yeah, bad brother right there. What's up, Chris? What up, Chris? So, you know, Mike, um, I don't necessarily want to tell the story, but um, we got Nate Williams hanging out with us too. So, we just want to say, hey, Yo, what's up what's to up, Nate, Nate as well? You know, I don't want to tell a story, Mike, but um, okay. I, and also, I want to say a, a huge, huge rest in peace. To our brother Kicho, Keith, Keith Williams, yeah. Kicho uh, was instrumental in putting that organization, wow, yeah. that band together. Uh, now yeah. Kicho, when, when I when I joined the circus, Kicho actually called me asking me for a reference for a, for a trumpet player because you know I was still teaching. So mm-hmm. at that point, I was like, "Hey man, what is it?" Because I need to do something different. So I was teaching, and he said, "Hey man, it's the Universal Circus. It's the first band we're gonna be going with Casual Cal and all this kind of stuff." <laughs> and I was like, "Uh." Give me a minute. And I literally quit teaching and joined the circus. Like, literally. Yeah, but then, hey. but then we had, um, now again, I want, I want you to tell the story the way you want to tell the story. Because there was somebody else, and 
you know, if I if I tell my version of it, it, it might not be, but because I, you know. But anyway, who's who's tax who's saxophone is that you're playing in that picture right there? Who's sax is that? Is that yours or somebody else's? I I bought that from a, a, my college buddy Bill Hauser. Oh, okay. So uh, that's yeah, yeah. that yeah. Because mm-hmm. I was I was an alto player. I I just played alto primarily, and as you can see, Dean James in the middle, he was the alto player. So I needed a tenor man. So um. Uh, Bill had just, he had left IU. We, we were friends in, in college. We played in some bands together in school. Great brother from Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. Shout out Bill Hauser. Mm-hmm. And he moved to Atlanta after he graduated from IU. Um, got down here. He was uh, l- l- linked up with some guys on the scene down here, man. And he got on the, the Soul Circus uh, gig, Universal gig. Mm-hmm. And he had come back to Bloomington just to hang out. I guess you guys had like a couple weeks off or something, a week off in the summertime or something. So he came back to school to hang out with us. And, you know, like I said, we were real tight, man. So I went and caught up with him for a day. And at this time, I was applying for teaching gigs. You know, I, I didn't know what I was. I, I knew I wanted to play. Right. But I didn't know how to go about that. You know, I'm from a very, uh, I'm from a household of educators, of people that are, you know, with uh, graduate degrees. And, okay, you go to school, son, and then you get you a good job with some good benefits. And, you mm-hmm. you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's how you do it. You know, but I knew that I didn't want to go the route of sitting behind a desk somewhere, you know, but I didn't know how to break into the industry. So, mm-hmm. you know, I started applying for teacher positions, small colleges, uh, high schools, whatever. Nothing was panning out for me. And um, my friend Bill Hauser comes back to Bloomington, Indiana. We hanging out. And he's uh, like, yeah, man, I'm doing a Universal gig, man. I'm, I'm not really feeling it. I think I'm about to quit, man, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's kind of rough for me right there, man. I'm not really digging it. And um, and I was like, well, what's it paying? You know, I'm a <laughs> yeah. broke college kid at the time. Man. Yeah. And he's like, so he told me what it was paying. And, it, it, you know, and per week, I think at that time, it probably would take me a month to make that as a college kid, you know. So I was mm-hmm. like. Wait, man, I'll do it. You know, what's up? He's like, well, you got to get a tenor. I was like, well, he said, I got an extra tenor. You can buy this tenor off of me. The show is coming to Indianapolis next week. Go up there. They send me the music. I learned the music. Went up there, set in with the band. Two weeks later, I'm in St. Louis on on the on the road with the with, with the circus. And uh, I remember, I remember all of that. I I didn't really, and to be honest <laughs> with you, until now, I didn't realize your connection with Bill because I thought that some other way you had gotten connected to the to the to the circus and just came for the audition. I didn't realize the connection between you and Bill. No, we were good friends, man. We worked in this it was a a, a school ensemble called the Soul Review, which is where I had my, my assistantship for grad school. We played in there for years. Uh, we were both music majors at IU. Good friends, man. So me, me and Bill go we go way back. So that yeah. explains that that actually explains a few things in terms of our interpretation of the story because, you know, there was there was some there was some reasons why um, it was uh, interesting and challenging out there on the road, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too far. Yeah. But uh, okay. we had some great times with Universal Circus, man. And check this yeah, out, Mike. Did, the re- remember how much fighting we did in terms of whether or not we were gonna wear those doggone vests? <laughs> we did not. <laughs> yeah, because we're not wearing them in this picture, so we must have thrown them on the ground or something. <laughs> they said y'all are the platinum soul band. You are gonna put these platinum sequence vests on? And uh, that was, it, but it was a great time, man. Like I guess I was fresh out of school. Man. I was 23 years old going out there on that road, man, and got to see the country, got to sit. You know, the one thing about a circus is you sit in those big cities. So we'd be in New York City for six weeks. We'd be in mm-hmm. L.A. for a month. Mm-hmm. So getting to go to jam sessions and uh, networking with other musicians. And um, it was just my first time of the, of the, of the road life like that, man. And uh, I was able to move to Atlanta. It's that's why I moved to Atlanta. Circus was based out of Atlanta, so I got down here, man. You guys plugged me into a lot of things, and I'm forever grateful, man. You, uh, KB, John Roberts, y'all look <laughs> out for me, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, real talk. I'm just KB, saying, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. As a as a, as a as a young kid coming to Atlanta, and I had I had some family here. My aunts lived here. My grandmother was here. She was alive at the time, but I didn't have any connections as far as the music industry, man. So, mm-hmm. you know, just y'all telling me where to go, what jam session to go to. Uh, come sit in with my band, you know, come to Vegas nights, come to <laughs> Vegas nights, whatever, wow. you know, so uh, good times, man. So speaking of Vegas nights, because uh, I've got I've got a number of guests coming up uh, on this series. And tell me about your experiences with Atlanta and the history of Atlanta, the number of venues that, you know, we used to have and 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 how you got, you know, your matriculation through the scene. 
you know, because mm-hmm. I know you and I had a conversation. I remember vividly our conversation. I want to say we were in New York. We were in a taxi. We were, yeah. We were in New York and mm-hmm. we were taxi and we were, we were like going at it about jazz and smooth jazz and yeah. yeah so t- tell us, uh, how, when you got to Atlanta, what was that matriculation like? Um, well, I would, Probably like a lot of young musicians, man. Like a lot of people ask me, how do you get on the scene? How do you do this? How do you do that? Can you connect me with this person, that person? And, and uh, a lot of it, I can just say my own experience, man. Just um, when I got here, um, you guys would tell me, well, Sunday nights is the jam session at 290. Wednesday nights is Apache. Uh, Thursday nights is whatever it was at the time. You know what I'm saying? It was it was somewhere to play probably four or five nights a week, maybe every night of the week. Churchill mm-hmm. Grounds, Monday night straight ahead jam session. So as a young man, just, just out of college, trying to get on the scene, like I said, the circus was my job at the time, but I knew I had dreams, hopes, aspirations of, you know, going into the R&B, soul, pop world, doing that kind of thing, you know, uh, jazz fusion or whatever. So um, yeah, man, so I kind of got down here and just hit the ground running. You know, the circus was gone most of the year, but when I was in Atlanta, I was, I was mm-hmm. out six, mm-hmm. seven nights a week trying to find somewhere to play you know, a lot of people come to Atlanta trying to find the nightclubs. I was trying to find the jam sessions and where are the mm-hmm. musicians, where the cats at, you know. So, you know, any young cats watching this uh, this interview, man, you know, y'all trying to get on the scene, that's that's it. You go to New York, go to L.A., go to Atlanta, wherever you move to, get on the scene, man. Go out there and play. Get your behind kicked on the bandstand and come back, you know, and uh, try to make a name for yourself. And, you know, and, and when the phone starts ringing, try to be a person of good character, show up on time, know, know your music. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that's that's my story anyway. You know. So so speaking of getting your butt kicked, we are we are blessed to have a number of great friends that tell us like it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So and and some of those friends are in this video coming up. So tell me about Studio Seven. Studio Seven. Okay. Um, that was a good friend of mine, Kenny Faison, another great saxophonist. He had opened the studio um, right before COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And um, he was looking for some ways to, you know, bring some business to the studio for recordings and live streaming and things of that nature. And he he reached out to me, and uh, and I I had always wanted to do like a live kind of uh, I would say straight ahead, but you know, jazz infused gospel soul type of thing. Um, so it, it was the, it was the perfect time for me to do something like that and. I had just lost my 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 father-in-law just passed away. My my mother-in-law was going through a serious battle with uh, with cancer, man. And we had just got into this pandemic, and it was just a rough time for everybody. So I also wanted to, you know, have a chance to just uh, kind of speak life and encourage people with some good music. And um, it it just worked out, man. And I you know I called my brothers, Lil John Roberts on the drums, Trey Gilbert on bass, Phil Davis on the keys, who are my big brothers. You know, they've been. Uh, friends of mine for a long time. We worked together on various projects w- with each other in, in different configurations, and uh, you know they they came through in the clutch, man. Uh, Melvin Baldwin, another good friend of mine, he mixed my first record for me. He was an engineer on the session, man. So it was just like a, a, a big reunion, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. let's take a listen. Let's take a listen to Mike Burton Studio Seven session featuring all those phenomenal brothers. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you are. Mike Burton, where'd you go? It's live, man. Stuff happens when you're live. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Stuff, and that's why I love doing this live. Stuff happens when you're live. So check this out. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a clip of something that Mike and I did at City Winery. Uh, this is a small, short clip of an original composition written by none other than Mr. Phil Davis. And this one features Little John, Sam Sims, uh, West Bird on keys. But it's just a little snippet of something we did over at City Winery while we get some technical stuff worked out. <laughs> Now, check this out, guys. That was Innocent Bystander, written by Phil Davis. So we're going to check and see if we got Mike back. Let's see. Do we have Mike back? Are you back, Mike? Yeah, I'm good, man. You got me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We got you back. Okay, we got you good. back. Sorry about that, man. Hey, man, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So, Mike, so tell me how do you balance? Uh, how do you balance between being a phenomenal artist, solo artist, as well as being a side man and playing with some of the most phenomenal, uh, legendary female vocalist and touring with them, uh, you know, from, well, you, you tell us who, who have you toured with? Most recently, uh, Patty LaBelle. That's, that's been my main thing for the past few years. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, let me stop it right just, there. Let me okay. stop it right there. Since you just happened to mention Patty, let's go <laughs> ahead and look at this clip. Now to everybody that's out there watching, uh, the, the, the quality may not be, but, but it's the content. It's the content. Check this out. Mike Burton, with the legendary Patti LaBelle. That's just crazy, man. That's just crazy. You on stage with the legendary Patti LaBelle. I mean, how, how did that, that come about? Crazy. How'd you get that call? Man, um, a good buddy of mine, uh, Jeff Bradshaw, uh, great tr uh, trombonist. Um, we worked together with Jill Scott for years, and um, and he uh, he got the call to put a horn section together for. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good? You good? You good? He got the call to put, to put a horn section together for Patti LaBelle back in 2012, actually. So we went on the road with her for the summer back in 2012 and then uh, didn't get a call back until 2018. <laughs> but when he got but when, when he got that call in 2018, they, they brought us back, man. And we've been rolling ever since until uh, COVID-19 came back in the picture. But um, but yeah, man, it's, it's been a, it's been a great ride. She 
She is amazing. She's 76 years young. And uh, oh, she's still yeah. kicking. She's still doing her thing, man. She's like your favorite auntie, man. She is the sweetest lady, man, most definitely. That's a beautiful thing. I want to send a quick yeah. shout out to, to Karen. Karen, thank you for joining us and, and, and hanging out with us. She hey, said, nice, Karen. Mike. Yeah, hey, she's liking what she's appreciate hearing. appreciate that. Yeah. So, Mike, let, let's, let's keep moving, man. So I, I know that you have done some great things with uh, Jill Scott. Jill Scott, yeah. Yeah, for, for a while. So let's just see some Jill. So what's next on the horizon? I know that something is happening tonight at midnight. Something's dropping tonight, tonight at, midnight. at midnight. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm putting out another single. Um, I released a, a project back in August. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my latest solo project. But um, just with everything that's been going on this year, man, I, I was uh, moved to write, write another song that didn't make the record, you know. So I was like, I'm going to just put this thing out and, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow's election day, big day for the country, man. So it's just, you know, I like to write words with, uh, to make people think some positive messages. Um, so yeah, so it's dropping tonight at midnight. It's called let the church say, uh, shout out to Jelani Jackson, my co-producer who helped me get this thing kicked out in, you know, uh, in a timely fashion so we can get it mm-hmm. out tonight. And, uh, yeah. So if y'all listening and watching, uh, Right now, you know, please at midnight go to iTunes, you know, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, all of them. Title it'll be on there at midnight tonight. So, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. Sherwin has a question for you, Mike Burton. What's up, bro? Sherwin says, "How did you get connected with Adam Blackstone and BBE?" Good question, man. Uh, relationships, man. I um, actually from probably from 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 doing the Jill Scott uh, gig, so. Years ago, I met Adam during my first stint with Jill, which was in 2008. Mm-hmm. And um, he had been Jill's MD for a long time. MD is music director for for y'all who not in who aren't in the industry, but uh, not medical doctors. But uh, <laughs> he was Jill's MD for a long time. He had left to go do Kanye and May, I think Janet Jackson at the time. And um, our bass players. Uh, at the time was uh, Dwayne Wright, DW, and he had a, a family emergency, so he had to leave. We were doing Essence Festival, and Adam came back to do the Essence Festival gig, and that's when I met Adam at Essence mm-hmm. 2008 in New Orleans, and uh, we've been cool ever since, man, and I guess, you know, uh, he had, he was starting to blow up around that time. He was already major. He was doing major things. He was getting to the TV stuff, man, and um, we, we just stayed cool, man, and um, um, he started to call me for stuff a few years mm-hmm. after that, man. And um, mm-hmm. it's it's been a great relationship. He is a great brother. He is a family man. He is a man of faith. He's just a good guy, man. You know, so that's it. I would say, you know, we all have our own paths. We all forge our own relationships. But once you meet people, meet good people, you know, just be a person of, of your word, be of good character, man. Um, and just always try to try to do your best. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think those things will come to to all of us, you know, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been a great thing. Adam's awesome. We starting up the Soul Train Awards, I think, next week. It's mm-hmm. all virtual. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, you know, but um, yeah, man, Adam Blackstone, he's 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 uh, the greatest man. So speaking of um, speaking of the horn work that you do, uh, you're mm-hmm. also uh, are you the founder or co-founder of Good Times Brass? Tell, tell us a little bit about that, real quick. Good Times Brass, uh. I guess so, founder. 
uh, back in 2012 again, man. I was I was uh, doing a doing a tour, and this tour had um, we were about to go on the road for like three months. And the day mm-hmm. of, like we're going to the airport, they say, matter of fact, don't go to the airport. Stay at the house. Um, some things have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the tour is postponed. Mm-hmm. So I already told my kids goodbye. They went to school for the day. Wow. My wife's going to take me to the airport. Bags are packed. And uh, the tour is postponed, you know. Um, so we're still thinking, Even two weeks from now, we'll, we'll, we'll be going out, you know. That turns into a tour is canceled. I've already subbed out my other gigs for the year and all of this, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And this is it's all I do, man. I'm a musician, you know. My right. wife at the time she had a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? So we we sit down there on the back porch trying to talk about so what's next, you know. Mm-hmm. And she really encouraged me, man. She was like, Look, what can you do to brand yourself, you know, to where you're not always relying on the phone to ring somebody else, create your own opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really where and she said, What's something that you always say? You know, and you know, Melvin Jones, one of my one of my best friends, man. Uh, great trumpeter, I was like me and him are always saying good times, you know. Good beast times, trumpeter. Good times that. He's a he beast of amazing. a trumpeter. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. And um, so I was like, well, you always saying good times. Let's good times, brass man. I, I called him on the phone, like, yo, I got an idea, man. Um, I'm thinking about because I my wife's from D.C. You know, she she hit me to go go music back when we were in mm. college. I love go go music, and I'm from Mississippi. You know, not far from New Orleans. I love second line brass band type music. I always wanted to marry those two. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was like, let's start, let's start a band. You know, initially it was let's start a band doing this kind of music. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's call it this. And um, so I, I went over to Melvin's house. We sat down and talked. We figured out who we, we want to call to be a part of the band, you know, and this and that. And um, that's kind of that's kind of how it started, man. We started having rehearsals at my house in the basement. And uh, we would meet every Monday or Tuesday it was. And me, uh, Trey Gilbert, Derek Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, Frankie Keone is on percussion, um, Ray, uh, on drums from Mississippi. I can't remember his last name right now, but, um, yeah, man. So anyway, all these cats, we came together, Wilbur Williams on trombone, yep, my brother. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, it, we started the thing that was eight years ago, man. And from that, you know, uh, with the horns out front, um, we started getting calls, um, mm-hmm. big Jim Wright, rest in peace, a great a great musician, music director, yeah. Uh, yeah. songwriter, producer, man. He was calling us in to do stuff for the Monique show at the time and uh, and uh, Sunday Best on BET back in the day. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. was pushing us as the horn section, like, man, you guys got this, you got that. He would always come to our shows, man. And so the, the brass band kind of trans- transferred in or transitioned into us doing the horn section stuff mm-hmm. as a section. Like, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of times cast guys get called to be a horn section and they call well i know a trombone player i know a sax guy i know you know but it's not like a cohesive unit that plays together all the time right and so right. much doing these shows and playing as a band the chemistry came and then we are already good friends we all silly we joke around and whatever you know what i'm saying and, <laughs> yeah and yeah. It, it it just became a thing man and we've been rolling ever since man and now I'm, I'm really thankful thank my wife for planting that seed and uh you know uh it's been good, man. God bless the child has got his own for real. Absolutely. Been rolling, even even during this pandemic, man, just recording constantly from home, working on various television shows and things like that, just because we already had a thing, we had a unit, and we are mm-hmm. we're loyal to each other, man. We, we're friends outside of the music, and our, our kids play together. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just mm-hmm. a, it's just a good thing, man. Yeah. Well, that's that's killing, man, and that's that's one reason why I wanted to bring up the Good Times Brass Band because I know as a yeah. section. That you all are on some of everybody's records, and you know we see you on on the television shows, everything from you know trumpet awards to I mean just mm-hmm. all over the world as a as a horn section. So yeah. if you have not checked out Good Times Brass Band, make sure you go check them out because Jewel, Jewel Prevo says that she has she loves uh, Rain is one of, one of her jams, yeah. you know. Yeah. Thank so uh, you. Thank yeah. You, thank you. So uh, so Mike, yeah. if we if we can sidestep just a little bit because I think it's as crucial to talk about. Mm-hmm your family again. Please uh-huh. tell us a little bit about Razia. Because I, I again, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, I've known Mike and Razia before they were married, like college right. student. So tell us a little bit about Razia, if you don't mind, you know, Razia yeah. and, and Chef Razia, you know, just, you know, tell us a little bit well, about definitely. it. 
Most definitely. Well, my wife, she's uh, from Washington, D.C. We met in college. We married uh, 14 years. Um, she went to school for social work, uh, psychology. She did that for like almost a decade. Mm -hmm. And then she had a had a vision. She had a and I did. She said, I, I see myself in the chef code. I don't want to do this social work thing anymore. We start having kids and just the, the stress of that job, you know, bringing all that the weight home when you're trying to deal with your family, you know, it, it's, it, it can be stressful. She was dealing with, gr with group homes and at-risk mm -hmm. youth. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we trying to raise kids at the same time. So it was a lot, man. And she she transitioned into um, into being a chef, you know. Um, um, she started uh, doing the catering thing. I, you know, you know, I guess in the beginning, I was like, you know, I was on the road with Tyler Perry and his crew. And I told the tour manager, I said, hey, my, you know, my wife started a catering company. And um, they called her, man, and she came wow. in there and rocked it. That was probably 10 years ago. She came in there and rocked that thing, man. I mean, starting fresh. And they still call her to this day. They toured last year with Medea's Farewell Tour. She still is doing production catering for them, man. So, uh, but yeah, she, she's a superstar, man. She's getting into um, doing the Zoom classes now. And uh, I, I honestly see her on television here in the near future with a, with a show, man. I, She's gonna have her products in stores nationwide. Her, her mac and cheese, her uh, cornbread, all of this stuff. So y'all be looking out. Fuller Foods uh, is her company. Uh, she's on Instagram, Chef Razia Sabor, S A B O U R. First name R A Z I A. Y'all check her out, and she is awesome. Absolutely, you know, and and again, I just I I love the Burton family because you know you know you never know who's watching. You know some you know when when you have great friends. You know, you don't talk yeah. every day, but you, you keep in touch in some way, shape or form. So I, yeah. I just love watching you and your family. And, and I saw Razia on, a, I think it was Chopped and, and some other stuff like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah man. Yeah. Kitchen, yeah, she was on the Food Network a few times. Yeah, man. Yeah. We love you too, brother. Yes, oh, sir. Bro. Hey, man, look. So yeah. check this out, Mike. So I'm, I'm, we've been talking for almost an hour now. You know, there's no, there's no wow. time limit. There's no time limit. See, so time it's, flies it's, when you're having fun, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of having your own. You are with Jody Jazz. Jody Jazz. Yes, sir. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that before I, before I play this uh, snippet that you sent me. <laughs> Jody Jazz uh, is a great mouthpiece company out of Savannah, Georgia. Uh, Jody Espina is the owner. Um, saxophonist, if you, if you like me, if you like most saxophonists, if you're on that, that quest to find the right mouthpiece, I suggest you you know, you know, you check out Jody Jazz, go to your local store and give them a shot, man. I mean, they have all kinds of mouthpieces for, you know, for whatever your liking is, man. So um, I've been with them for probably seven, eight years now, man. And um, that's definitely enhanced my plan, you know, so check them out. So you want to set this clip Jody. up or you want to tell us a little bit about this clip we're about to hit, watch from the um, from when you this were with him? Jody? Yeah, yeah. OK, yeah, this is we were talking about his new uh, new mouthpiece. It is the. HR Custom Dark, which is what I'm playing on now on my alto, um, it's definitely uh, helped me to center my my sound. It's uh, rolled off a lot of those that high end tone that's kind of been um, giving me some issues for for a few years now. I'm trying to get, really, you, you know, get get rid of some of that stuff. Yeah, get a darker, rounder sound. I mean, definitely, I play more a contemporary pop, you know, soul R&B type music, but I'm definitely I, I love my straight ahead jazz. I listen to it quite often, you know. Mm -hmm. So just trying to find a happy medium in those two sounds. One of my favorite saxophonists is is Kenny Garrett. He's able to go from, you know, playing with Woody Shaw straight ahead stuff to going into the mouse thing to going into, you know, even more poppy type sound and stuff with the same kind of mouthpiece. So I was trying to mm -hmm. just, you know, find something like that. I love Kirk Whalem's tone as well. Um, of course, the old guys, Dexter Gordon. One of my favorites, Gene Ammon. So just, you know, as an alto player, I still love the tenor players and just trying to find, you know, that that sweet spot, man. So this this one is is it's been working great for me. It's the HR Custom Dark. So all right. So let's check out uh, Mike Burton with Jody Jazz. Hi, everybody. I'm Jody Espina for Jody Jazz, and I'm with the great Mike Burton here. Hey Mike, how you guys doing? All right. All right, man. Yeah, great to have <laughs> Thanks you. Thanks for having me, man. We're down at the Jody Jazz uh, showroom. Here and uh, Mike is going to show you the brand new HR Star Custom Dark Alto. Yeah. Go so, ahead and let's hear some music. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Man, that is just straight ridiculousness. So, what? so <laughs> that's just so. Wait, so the mouthpiece made you sound like that. <laughs> yes. So it, it was you the press mouthpiece. A button, you press a button like, Boop, and then it's just like amazing grace. Exactly. No, no. Listen. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm listening. I mean, this is this is what horns. You know, a saxophone is all these saxophone is listening. Horns, reeds, you know, mouthpieces, all that stuff ligatures you know uh it's, it's it's still about the player you know what i'm saying but what those things do they make it easier to you know i guess to get the sound you're looking for but it's it's not going to do it for you, you still got to practice you still have to listen to the greats try to emulate imitate transcribe do all those things but once you mm -hmm. get to a certain level these pieces the, the horn you play the reeds you use the mouthpiece you use it's going to help you you know reach that goal or it's going to help you it, it's going to make things easier for you you know mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. if that makes any sense you know a lot of times people say you know i want to play like whoever and they go get the same setup they have and it's not working mm -hmm. well bro you got to practice you got to <laughs> share you got to you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. it's yeah. not it's not uh it's not magic but um definitely this piece jody's pieces have definitely made things a lot easier for me uh, you know, my horn plays evenly from top to bottom. Um, and it's just some good stuff, man. And Jody's just good people, man. It's a great company to be affiliated with. You know? Great, great, great. Hey, man, we got we got my brother, uh, Eric Essex, is hanging out with us for a hey, little bit. Hey, what's e, up, brother? I cannot That's say right. enough about Eric Essex, man. The He's one of my there, mentors, yeah, man. man. Yes, sir, man. Man, when, when I have an issue or I'm trying to do something... Eric is one of the first calls that I make, and I just thoroughly appreciate you coming and hanging out tonight because Eric is going to be one of my guests coming in the future because Eric is doing some beautiful things down there in Birmingham. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So, Mike, yes. let, let, real quick before we say bye, 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 you know I'm a nerd, you know, so I, I decided that um, if I was going to do something like this, I wanted to do it right. But you are not only, you, you've grown from being a uh, composer, saxophonist, to horn arrangements, and I'm looking at what's behind you. So we were just talking about equipment, right? So, mm. you know, nerd us out for a second. What do you use to record your horn parts and the things that you are submitting to other people? Nerd us out. What, what kind of equipment do you got behind you? Man, what am I using? I'm using Logic Pro. For sure. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not as computer savvy as you are, so for me... Hey, man, I use Logic, too. I use Logic. I, yeah, I use Logic, too. I'm, so. I'm, I'm just saying for the... Uh, person who is not as computer savvy for me any apple products they're very user friendly mm -hmm. so i use logic logic pro um my interface is focus right scarlet mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. you know um simple stuff man um what is this so mic? what are you I'm using what are you using to catch that saxophone sound what kind of mic are you using because it's, it's, it's got to be a magic button in the mic that, that makes you no, sound like that it's an mxl it's not even an expensive mic i'm just i think look a lot of stuff, you know, if it goes in good, it come out. It comes out good. I think a lot of people put a whole lot of effects. Like I've I've gone into great studios, top notch studios, and recorded, and I come out there. I'm like, that doesn't even sound like me, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think a lot of stuff you don't need a lot of those effects on your horn, man. You know, just um, with with Logic, there's a preset for alto sax, a preset for tenor sax. I can hit that button roll off some of the reverb or some of the uh what is it you know one of the buses or whatever turn mm -hmm. that off and um it's it's dry but it sounds like me you know mm -hmm. and i leave the other stuff up to the, who, the engineer who, who's ever mixing the record you know mm -hmm. but um it really bro it's not rocket science over here man i you know i have what works for me just like with like i said with horns and mouthpieces and all that stuff you know a lot of cats go out there and spend thousands tens of thousands of dollars on things but they don't even know what they're doing in the first place so do mm. just do some research before you start spending all their money man a lot of times don't even take a whole lot you know to mm -hmm. get the sound that you're looking for 
Sometimes um, less is more. Absolutely. Sometimes less is more. Most definitely. So. Absolutely. I see what one of my good buddies, Ronnie Gary, my big brother, uh, he would always say, he's like, man, I go to these studios, these cats, they got all this stuff, man, all these plugins and uh, <laughs> this and that, you know. I'm like, man, where's your song? <laughs> where's your song at? <laughs> where your song at, bro? Like, you got all this stuff. What you doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, hang on, Mike. One second. Don't go anywhere. We're we, we about to close up. Don't go anywhere, but I got to make a shameless okay. plug real quick, guys. So for anybody that is on YouTube, please make sure that you click that subscribe button. I would love to grow this channel. Now, everything is called M3 Live. Uh, and the reason I'm transitioning to M3 Live is because my name, of course, is Melvin Maurice Miller, Melvin M. Miller. So my website is Melvin M. Miller, and, and many people drop off my mill initial. So I just wanted to kind of transition to to who I am and what I do. So, you know, I try to do a lot of things live, just like this. This is all live. So make sure that you go to M3 Live uh, on Facebook is M3.Live. And on YouTube, of course, is M3 Live with no spaces. And I, I don't want to, you know, make sure that you click that like button if you're enjoying this content because there's more to come. Back to my very, very special guest, Mike Burton. Mike Burton, we're going to say hey. good night, bro. We're going to say good night. Right, but I just want to thank you, sir for coming and hanging out and, uh, but you know, just, we go back to hairlines and, and no gray and <laughs> we go so we go far back, back bro. Yeah, so, uh, Hey man, I appreciate you coming, Mike. So how can everybody keep up with Mike Burton? You know, give me all your IG and, and tell them more about what's dropping tonight and et cetera. I'm sorry. Hang on. I digress. Is there anything, uh, I don't, you know, feel free uncensored, what do you want to talk about what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow is election day, man. We cannot leave man, without talking vote. about tomorrow. Please, 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 please vote. If you have not voted already, go and vote. Uh, stay in the lines. You know, if, if, if it might be all day. I don't know how long it's going to take you to vote tomorrow, but please do it. This is probably the, it's definitely the, the most important election in my lifetime. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, I, and, I, and I've been around for a while now, so I can say that. <laughs> so please, y'all, please vote. Do your research. You know, be educated about it. You know, don't just um, sit on here and watch somebody on your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed and you think that's what it is. You know, do your own research, you know, mm -hmm. find out for yourself, please, please, please. Uh, because, you know, I got kids, man, and I want my kids to live in a country that's going to be all right. Yes, man, when I'm, when I'm gone, when my grandkids are here, you know what I'm saying? So it, it starts tomorrow. Absolutely. You know? So please, so please, please, please vote. Um, and uh, and everybody, yeah. if, if you have already if you've already done an absentee ballot or a mail in ballot, please just do some follow up. Just just, you know, call somebody to make sure that, you know, it, sure. it got in. Make sure it got where yeah. you needed to get to. Most yeah. definitely. Because I was talking to my sister in law today and she told me that she just found out that her voter registration was not happening. You wow. know, like some, something happened with it. So I don't know. bro. So she's trying to figure that out, you know, as we speak, mm -hmm. man. So please. Like like Melvin says, check up on it, man. And uh, also, just want to say thank you to you, brother. This is awesome. Your production quality for this thing. I mean, this is this is top notch, man. So keep going, brother. Y'all hit up Melvin for not just he not only a trumpeter. He's a he does web development. He does. Uh, he has. I'm a nerd. Studio. He's he's an engineer. Like this this brother is genius. Seriously. Um, oh man. Graphic design, whatever you know. So. Uh, he's awesome, man. So y'all, y'all reach out to Melvin. Not just watch his, his YouTube show, but hit him up. He, I appreciate he's, that. He's an educator, you know all that good stuff, man. So yeah. Uh, and tonight at midnight, I'm releasing a new single, "Let the Church Say." So please, uh, I prefer you download it iTunes, uh, Google, uh, Amazon, whatever. But if you want to stream it, that's fine too. You can go to Spotify. It's gonna be on title. Uh, all those, you know, um, platforms. So please check it out. Some new music, and you can check it out tomorrow when you're in line waiting to vote. You know, there it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please put your hands together for my brother Mike Burton, y'all. Give him some love. <laughs> Got to be cheesy too, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have fun with it, man. Got to have fun with it. Yeah, man. So, guys, one more time, uh, thank you, Mike, for being here. And uh, I want to make sure that if anybody wants to check me out. I am. I do have my own radio show, which is on WJZA. So I want to thank my partner, my, my my good friend for years and years and years, Renee Miller, for giving me that opportunity. So also one more time, 
make sure that if you are enjoying this, send me a message, send me a comment. I'm going to try to keep doing this live. Not pre-recorded. Uh, most of the time, if anything is pre-recorded, it will be, you know, some of the performances, et cetera, et cetera. Because I just want to make sure that we get the right, the right quality out to you. Because it's all about production, all about quality. So until next time, this is M3 Live. I want to thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. And um, I guess I'll see you all next time. Peace. Yeah.